thing, here, here's what I was thinking. I was thinking about the, the fact that I, it stuck in my mind all week, that Cokie Roberts line that every woman in the press corps knew she couldn't get into an elevator with uh, John Conyer. And, and I don't mean to elevate myself above anybody, because every man knows that the thoughts going through his head are disgusting. We all have a pornographic, every guy has a pornographic movie running through his head. Every guy has thought terrible things. Some of us have said terrible things, done terrible things. Okay. You get, when a, this is true. I decided in the 80s when feminism first flared up, the disease, the plague of feminism first flared up, I decided I wasn't going to buy into it. I just wasn't going to live that way. I didn't like it. I thought it was foolish. I thought, you know, I'm an individualist. I think any woman can do whatever she wants. It's not for me to judge what choices she wants to make in life, but I am going to make the choices that I want to make in life. When a woman gets into an elevator with me, I take my hat off, okay? Now, that usually only comes out in New York because in California, I'm not always wearing a hat, but in New York, I always wear a hat. And when I I get in an elevator. If a guy gets in, I don't care. But if a woman gets in, I take my hat off. And I was thinking about this because we've been talking about the fact that these two kinds of ways of approaching morality, one is a rule-based system that at its extreme becomes tyrannical, and the other is an individualist system that at its extreme becomes anarchical. It just becomes chaos. But I was thinking, like, I don't like people telling me what to do, and I don't actually trust anybody to tell me what to do, not, not the church, not any organization, certainly not the government. I don't trust anybody to tell me what to do. I believe I have a conscience and a mind and a, 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 uh, and a moral center, and I can find my own way studying great thinkers and studying the church and going to church. And I thought, why do I take my hat off when a woman gets in the elevator? Certainly not because I think some woman is just dying to see the top of my head, although I know they, I know they are, really. But, you know, but, but no, it's, it's not. It is a, a, a rule I made myself that trains the mind. I think that that is what rules are for. They train the mind. You pick the rule, you live by the rule, and the rule tra trains the mind. And anybody who deal, any, any man, any man who's married knows that he is married to a different kind of creature than himself. I mean, any guy who sits and talks to his wife and loves his wife is sitting, there are days, so help me, I mean, I've been married now almost 40 years, there are days, so help me, when I look at my wife and I think, I do not understand what this woman is talking about. She, I know she's a brilliant girl. I know she's got a great, great heart. She's the best wife in the world. I do not understand a word coming out of her mouth. Th that is something that marriage trains you to respect and love. You know, I mean, if, if you're paying attention, you start to realize there's another way of looking at the world. And even though it sounds crazy to you, it actually makes a certain amount of sense if, you know, you're, you are of the other sex. So you have these rules that you set and that you follow. You can get them from your church. You can get them from the great thinkers like Aristotle, the great ethicists who have talked about them. You can get them wherever you get them. You get those rules and you follow those rules by a discipline and they train your mind. Art trains your mind. This is one of the reasons I love the arts so much is they, te they train your emotions. The arts are a school for your emotions. And the reason people follow certain rules in the arts is because they know that those are the ways you can school people's emotions. Even bad people write great works and, and paint great paintings. The rules are a way of training your mind. And so you can find the rules that will do that. You know. You know where you're lacking. I mean, look, there are going to be bad people in this world. There are going to be people who press the button on their desk and lock the door so they can attack young female staffers. Those people, you know, are, are not going to follow the rules, but you have to follow the rules because they will train your mind. And as your mind becomes trained and as your emotions become trained, you will become a more happy person. You will become a joyous person. The rules are not there because they, every rule works for every person. The rules are not universal. The rules are what you turn to, to train your mind to become the person that God meant you to be. Every one of us knows that we were meant to be something better than we are right this minute. Every one of us knows that. There is no person who doesn't know it. There is even, uh, even Adolf Hitler knew you know, down in his heart until, until he wasn't there anymore, until his soul was gone, which I assume happened at some point in his life. But, but everybody whose soul is still there has a little message that's coming in saying, yeah, 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 you, you were meant to be something bigger than this. The rules are a way of training. I believe that's, that's the way I read the gospel. When Jesus says something, I don't think like, oh, I have to do this or I'll feel guilty. I think, do that. Judge not lest you be judged, and you will train your mind to see the world in another way. Look at yourself before you look at the guy across from you, and you will learn to see the world in an eternal, beautiful, brilliant, godly way, and your, your life will become more joyful.